As organizations continue to become more distributed and we start to deal with uh, different size data centers and things like the edge, uh, managing the network in that environment uh, really becomes a, a bigger and bigger challenge. Uh, joining me on the light board to discuss that is uh, Mike Capriano. He is the Chief Marketing Officer at Pluribus. Mike, thanks for joining us today. It's great to be here, George. Thanks. Yeah, uh, so let's talk a little bit about this and some of the issues that we see in, in this sort of changing data center. Sure. Uh, what, if you look at the typical architecture of an enterprise or service provider today, it's pretty centralized. Okay. One or two uh, data centers, primary backup, yep. maybe some regional data centers, maybe some co-location facilities, sure. but fundamentally pretty centralized. What's happening though is there's a set of emerging applications whose requirements cannot be met by that centralized architecture. Okay. So what are some of the issues that are, that are causing that? Uh, when we look at it, we kind of categorize it into four buckets. Okay. Um, the first one is latency. So if you use an example, let's say virtual reality, um, uh, you can either have all the compute on your head, right. or you can have a pair of thin glasses with the compute happening in the cloud, which is where things are going. Okay. That round trip latency can't exceed 20 milliseconds. If it exceeds 20 milliseconds, the user actually gets nauseous. Oh. So, so if I'm in California with a pair of virtual reality glasses on, and I'm going back to compute in Iowa, that's not gonna work. Right. So you have to actually move compute out closer to the user. So latency is the first one. Okay. Uh, the second one is bandwidth. I'll just abbreviate it this way. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at video surveillance as an example. Okay. So maybe, you know, today I've got two, three, four, ten cameras. In the future I might have a thousand. Sure. And of that, of those thousand cameras, I might be interested in five minutes of video on two different cameras. I don't want to send all that back up to the cloud and pay for that bandwidth. I want to do the analytics at the edge. Sometimes we call that data thinning. Okay, so yeah, so kind of cutting it down before you have to deal with it, Exactly, right? because okay. with the rise of the Internet of Things, there's lots of data streaming up to the network, up to the cloud now, which is not what we've traditionally seen. Right, and then that's only going to get worse, I would assume, right? Exactly. Okay, well, so what's the third thing? The third one is autonomy. And what that means is there are certain Internet of Things uh, and, and other applications that if they get severed from the central cloud, need to keep working. Okay. So public safety, oil refinery yeah, safety, you've got multiple actuators and sensors working together and if they detect the problem, it, a, you know, the latency back to the cloud, a centralized cloud is bad and if the, if the connection's cut, you still need that safety mechanism to function. Sure, okay, that makes sense. Uh, the fourth one, is privacy. Uh, I thought privacy was dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with privacy, um, uh, you've got things like GDPR, mm -hmm. you've got just data sovereignty in general, right. um, and you've just got sort of a, a bigger sensitivity to it these days. So an, an example is maybe you go to a theme park mm -hmm. and they use AI for facial recognition to give you a better user experience. Okay. Uh, you get your fast pass or whatever. Right, sure. Um, when you leave that theme park, you want to know your data staying there. You don't want it leaking out. Right. And so having the compute function there in the theme park, the, store, the data storage function there in the theme park is a, an example of why you need edge compute for data privacy. Okay, and so I mean all of these are going to really make the, that, that, the networking component even much more critical, right? Right, because what, what you're going to see is you're going to see these edge com com compute locations, my clouds aren't too good here, but <laughs> um, these edge compute locations are going to proliferate. Right, sure. Um, and, and you're going to need to solve the networking problem there. Okay. Um, and it's, it's significant. So Mike, every time I hear somebody talking about the edge, I hear them talk about 5G. So where does 5G play into all this? That's a really good question. Um, so the way, what we look at with 5G is it's sort of an accelerant. So if you look at what's going on, you've got 3G, going to 4G, going to 5G. Um, we look at uh, 5G as not being in the critical path of edge compute. We believe okay. edge compute will kind of form its own market okay. in parallel to 5G. Okay. Um, but what, what 5G brings is, is it, it brings increased bandwidth that is pervasive to lots of people and things. Okay. Um, and it brings decreased latency. And so we view it as a catalyst. 
Okay. So the edge is going to happen no matter what, but this is just going to make it go that much faster. Exactly. So Got it. when these two th when these two things kind of intersect, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to speed up. That's that's the way we look at it. Great. So Mike, uh, can you give me a, a, an example of how this looks more of a, of a real world diagram in, in the data center and how you guys interact with that? Sure. I think probably be helpful for me to draw sort of a real uh, world network or as close as I can to okay. on the light board and that'll help. Well, Mike, this is definitely real world. Why don't you walk us through what you have here? Sure. Um, so what I tried to lay out is kind of how the edge is emerging. Okay. Uh, up top, I've got the centralized data center. Okay. Typically, you're going to see two of those sites, you know, maybe up to five, mm -hmm. um, whether it's service provider or enterprise. Then okay. you've got some folks who have regional data centers or are using co-location services. Okay. And th these are just rough numbers, let's say five to ten. Sure, it could vary from organization to organization, right? Right. Yeah. And, and I'd say that's kind of where the edge is today. Okay. Right? So I might even say, you know, right here is today. Okay. And where it's going tomorrow. Gotcha. Okay. Um, after that, uh, we're going to start seeing a move out to specialized co-location facilities, edge co-location facilities, okay. as well as central offices for telcos and head ends for cable operators. So by specialized, what would be some of the specialization you might see there? Um, it's just they're going to be purchasing real estate in oh, okay. unusual places that are closer um, to people and things that require that have you know those requirements we talked gotcha. about on the previous graph. Okay, cool. Um, and then eventually we have to see how this works out or how this plays out. Is uh, the the this compute infrastructure could move out to um, base station aggregation sites. Okay. All right. Great. Um, and that and that that's kind of that intersection of five G and edge compute that we talked about as well. So what you can see really is there are multiple edges, um, and we're using the term distributed cloud. All right, well that's an interesting term. Why do you call it distributed cloud? So the reason we call it distributed cloud is I've kind of described the edge compute locations, but the consumption model we think is really going to be cloud-based. So you're going, to, um, ha you're going to be able to spin up containers, you're going to be able to deploy your workload to the right edge location, and you're going to be able to turn it down when you're done and just pay for what you use. So we say you know edge compute plus the cloud consumption model equals distributed cloud. That's why we use the term. Okay, well that makes sense. All right, so then how does Pluribus uh, plug into this uh, diagram? Because of this explosion, if you look at these numbers I wrote here, you know, 5, 5 to 10, 10 plus, and then n by 10, yeah. you can have a massive increase in complexity. It's already hard enough to manage a centralized data center. Yeah, like here is a challenge, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So now all of a sudden, imagine you've got all these dark locations. You don't have people out there. Right. Uh, you've got to network it all together. We're, we're working on solving the networking problem and simplifying that, lowering operational costs lowering capital costs, increasing agility. Gotcha, okay. So, you know, fundamentally what you've got is, I'm, I'm not gonna draw this multiple times, but pretend these are two top of rack switches, and then underneath here you've got a bunch of servers and storage, right? Um, this is gonna be obviously large, this is gonna be, uh, call it medium, this is gonna be a mini DC, and if we get down here, it's going to be a micro DC. Um, and fundamentally, you're going to have you know this replicated in different sizes at all these locations, right? Gotcha. Okay. So just less racks and as you go down the, the graph. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Um, and and so now you're thinking, all right, I've got to manage all of these things. It's right. all distributed. Sure. So our approach is to bring uh, what we call a network fabric to this to this problem, and it's uh, it's fundamentally it's an SDN-enabled next-generation network fabric okay. for distributed cloud. So SDN, software-defined networking. Exactly. Okay. Right. For the, for the distributed cloud. Right. Gotcha. Now, we have a unique approach. Um, we do this without a controller. Okay. So we have, if you think about SDN, typically you think that's an external controller right. holding the state of the network sure. and programming the switches. And, that, and I would think that's going to struggle as we start to get this model, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what we've done is we said, let's, d let's still get a full view of the state of the network, get the benefits of SDN programmability and operational simplification, but distribute that into the switches themselves. So now every switch in here, all of these switches, uh, have the state of the network and they have the SDN intelligence that allows you to go to, into any one switch and see and control the entire fabric. 
And, and I would assume that we could be talking about hundreds, if not thousands, of switches. Right? Uh, you you can you could have you know TBD number of switches depending on the type of organization you are. Wow. Okay. Um, we do rec we do have kind of recommendations on how big of a fabric you should make. Okay. So if you're really big, you might end up with some number of fabrics, right? And, okay. and then federate those together. Gotcha. Okay. Um, however, you know, you're still kind of reducing your complexity, let's say a factor of 10 or 20. Yeah, okay, okay? makes sense. And so, you know, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a fabric that stretches across all of this, right? And instead of, let's say, you know, 30, 40 switches, let's say it was 40, it's gonna look like one. Gotcha, right? okay, right. And then what, what we're gonna do, um, one, of the, one of the important things um, about edge compute, and in particular as driven by 5G, which we talked about, mm -hmm. is sli network slicing. Okay. Right? And this is the ability to completely slice the network across management, data, and control plane, so you can have multi-tenancy if you're a service provider, or if you're an enterprise, you can have a specific slice for a particular application. So, so kind of like a QoS, almost? Fundamentally, yeah, okay. except you're, you're literally slicing the network and creating resources that are dedicated to each slice. And so, I don't know if that, that works, but that's, yeah, that makes that's sense. three slices. Sure. Uh, three slices, so you've got one fabric with three slices. You could have one uh, for autonomous vehicles. You could have one for corporate traffic. You could have one for sensor data. So a lot of these slices would be, I guess, like workload driven then? Workload driven, yeah. exactly. Okay. Like how much performance do you need? You need a, a low, ultra low latency, ultra secure slice? Do you need just you know, a slice with kind of normal set of resources for corporate traffic? Um, do you need a slice that's some, somewhere in between that? Okay. Yeah. So uh, obviously uh, one of the things that I think we talk a lot about in just software-defined networking in general is sort of the uh, automation and orchestration that plays along this. And I, I would assume that you'd want that because as these things pop in, you want them just to start working and not have to manually go in and net, uh, manage each single port on the environment. Because 40, exactly. 40 switches, we could be talking an you know, infinite number of ports. Right, right. right. So fundamentally, um, you, you, you plug in a new switch if you deploy a new site. You just need basic connectivity. The switch is automatically stitched into the fabric, absorbs the configuration. Um, and the nice thing about a fabric is if you, if you want to go change the config, I say I want to add an ACL mm -hmm. uh, for a security policy. Sure. Um, it's, you, you go to any switch in the fabric, and it's automatically populated to all switches in the fabric. Now, the advantage of the controllerless, um, the, the controllerless approach to this is that all of the smarts and all of the services are distributed throughout the fabric. So if you are needing some network service as an application from your local node, the service is right there. So there's no delay. If you, need, if you needed that in a, in a controller-based implementation, you might be going you know, pretty far geographically to get state for your network or make a change. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And with edge compute, we're trying to drive down latency so it doesn't work as great. Yeah, that makes sense. So Mike, is, is this based on uh, proprietary uh, technology or is this more of an open networking capability? This is totally open networking. Okay. So uh, our approach is we partner with white box vendors or bright box vendors. So Edge Core is a partner of ours. Okay. Dell and EMC is a partner of ours. Gotcha. They provide the hardware. We provide the software that runs on top. The nice thing about that approach is um, it's a Linux-based approach. Lots of things are Linux-based these days. So sure. folks, you know, many, many folks are trying white box networking now right. because they get to learn those Linux skills and improves uh, the skill set of the network operator, the network engineers. Um, it also provides flexibility. You don't have vendor lock-in. You right. don't like this hardware anymore? Get rid of it. Get a new one. You don't like our software anymore? Get rid of it. Drop in a new one. So it's it's really extremely open and, and very beneficial. Keeps everybody honest, right? Yeah. So Mike, before we close the video out, um, for people that aren't familiar with Pluribus Networks, just give them a little background on what you guys are doing. Sure. Um, we're focused on open networking, primarily focused on data center modernization, multi-site data center unification. You can probably tell from our discussion that we're pretty good at multiple sites. Yeah. So we solved that problem today for a lot of folks. Okay. And then where we're headed is extending the fabric for edge compute or distributed cloud. Um, we're based in Silicon Valley. We're a very highly innovative company. We have over 200 customers today. Okay. Uh, we actually have over 25 
service providers, tier one service providers in production in their mobile cores today. Okay. And we've got another 25 that are in pre-production. So our, our software is really hardened and battle tested. It's something that folks can trust. Okay. And um, you know, our offering is fundamentally a NetVisor 1 operating system, which is a Linux-based system, which can be deployed on any white box. Okay. Uh, the adaptive cloud fabric, that's fundamentally this, which right. is a controllerless, SDN fabric that goes across multiple switches. Okay. Um, we also have rich telemetry. Okay. That's pervasive through the fabric. You can see everything connected to the fabric, every flow in the fabric. We dump all of that into a two and a half billion flow database. Okay. Which you can use standard tools to go look at. Okay. And then the last thing we have is something called Pluribus Unum. It's a graphical user interface network management system that allows you to manage at the box level or at the fabric level, and okay. then it also comes with this module called Insight Analytics, which is sort of a, a graphical network DVR, lets you go look at that analytic, oh, okay. that telemetry data, and easily troubleshoot um, across the fabric. Okay, great. So it sounds to me like you guys have got the foundation for kind of this problem, and are really setting people up to manage this, this problem as it grows. Exactly. Okay, great. Exactly. Well, thanks for joining us, Mike. It's been great to be here. Yep. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thanks for joining us today.